So with this transition in 2024 of SoFi being a transition stage, I do think this becomes more of an interesting stock for me personally. Welcome back in investors. We have a special video today. We're gonna to talk about three stocks that are under $8. Now with it being under $8, obviously there's going to be a tremendous amount of risk here because these are almost in penny stock territory. So let's talk about three stocks that could either double or go broke in the very near future. This is obviously not financial advice. This is just my opinion. I always recommend dollar cost averaging into a broadly diversified index. So this is just for entertainment purposes. But let's talk about stock number one, which is SoFi. Now, I recently did a video on SoFi saying that the stock could crash after earnings because we did a deep dive video on the book value of the company, and it was trading for a massive premium when we look at book value of the bank. And there is a lot of hype around this stock and there's a tremendous amount of YouTubers creating out content that's getting people excited, but not really diving into the true problems and true opportunities for SoFi. So if you're one of those people and you're just one-minded, you probably wanna watch another video that cheerleads your stock, but we take a fundamental approach on this channel and try to let math solve a lot of the equation. So we're in the recent quarter, we see here that total revenues did grow 37%. And we're seeing that tangible book value starting to grow here. There was multiple concerns I brought up with SoFi. And guess what, guys? Management is now redirecting the business because the things that I was concerned about, obviously management is concerned about as well. And so they are shifting the business model. And that's why 2024 is going to be a transition year for SoFi. Everything that I stated in my last video before earnings is exactly what the concern is for SoFi. So if you don't like the truth, move on to another guy that has 10,000 subscribers and only talks about SoFi going in one direction, even though it's gone in the other direction. Tangible book per common share is $3.92. I believe SoFi is a $5 stock or was a $5 stock, but if they do what they're saying they're gonna do, could we see multiple expansion? And the answer in my opinion is yes. So let's talk about a few things about SoFi, not only at trading above book value, which is a concern to me, considering the type of book it owns versus your larger institutional banks. Now, the thing I wanna highlight here is look at the diluted shares that are hitting the market here. Going from 929 million shares outstanding to over a billion shares outstanding. If this is not sing signaling a red flag to you, I don't know what will. They are putting a lot of shares on the market. When you look at the amount of shares that they're watering down on shareholders, it it also dilutes the true growth rate of the company. So there's multiple ways to value a company. Personally, with SoFi, I'd rather look at book value and discount the book value because I think the quality of book is lesser than its peers, but they have more unique value propositions within their business model that I think you have to pay attention to. And so when I look at a multiple of EBITDA, if we're looking at this as an average bank, yes, I think about a $5 stock makes sense with a future value between 11 to maybe $13 on the high end. And so while credit quality is a risk and default rates, in my opinion, are a risk for this company because of the type of loans that they take on, but despite slower growth in the second quarter, this is where I get excited. SoFi expects solid growth across its technology and financial services segment, projecting revenue growth of 20 and 75% on the two segments. If you guys have been following the channel, these are the two areas where I think you can get multiple expansion. What does this mean? If people, if they can start making technology be a higher percentage of their income and assets under management, AUM, this is going to be a uniquely valued proposition company where the multiple can definitely expand here. So instead of it getting kind of your traditional brick and mortar bank multiple, I do think we need to bump the multiple up. And so where I'm kind of thinking about taking this is that SoFi will start pushing out more assets under management, more of the technology side of the platform, making it more of a part of their revenues. And this is where you get that multiple expansion, a lot less liability, better margins. The problem is always going to be this dilution factor. The dilution has to stop for this company but I can compare it to maybe a Charles Schwab here where you're looking at closer to three to four times book value rather than two times book value, which means that you know SoFi could possibly be trading closer to six to seven dollars right now, and I think you'd be in fair market value if this is truly where they're taking the direction here. When you look at the way the company is diversified, it is definitely a bank first and foremost, so we have to value it as a bank. And not only is it a bank, but the quality of loans are not well diversified. And so that's the biggest gripe I have along with the dilution. 
But if we really look at SoFi shifting its business model to the more AUM and tech platform, this truly becomes more of a fintech play where you get that multiple expansion, especially after the recent sell-off going from nearly $9 a share down to $6.60. Next up is going to be Warner Brothers Discovery. Now this one to me is pretty interesting because you really can't put a price tag on intellectual property and nobody really understands where markets are gonna go in the short term. But when we look at what's going on with Warner Brothers Discovery, one of the most extensive libraries out there and one of the most underappreciated stocks in the whole stock market. The stock recently hit a 52 week low of $7.34 and a 52 week high of nearly $15. This stock has been all over the place, but mainly in a downtrend pretty consistently here. And at some point in time, are we going to find a bottom? Is this going to be a buying opportunity? Once again, ladies and gentlemen, when we're dealing with stocks in the five, six, seven, eight dollar range, you're probably dealing with stocks that have a lot of problems and you have to pay attention to what is going on here. This is a high risk, high reward type of stock once again. Now, this was a spinoff of AT&T, as most of you know, and the big concern about this company is going to be the debt load which they got net down from $45 billion to $39.8 billion. And when we look at cash flow sitting right around $6 billion, this is a company that is free cash flowing, but paying down debt aggressively. Management understands this debt load in a higher interest rate environment is very, very dangerous for the company. And obviously the market's pricing in some bad news here. Multiple headwinds with this company, obviously competition's picking up, spending is picking up for content creation. They're carrying a substantial amount of debt load. And I definitely think we're getting close to a buy. This is a company that had an enterprise value of $82 billion, now sitting at $59 billion, and it's free cash flowing right around $6 billion. I really think they're getting to a point where if they can get that debt load down, valuations come down enough to where I think it's compelling. I don't think it's a screaming deal, but I definitely think it's compelling at these levels. And the key is going to be getting that debt load down just a little bit more to where they can handle the debt load, still reinvest in the business, but also return capital to shareholders in either A, buybacks, or B, some sort of reinvestment in content creation as well. And when we look at forecasts, we have prices anywhere from $7 all the way up to $36. And so for me, I'm thinking right around this $7 to $8 mark here in Warner Bros. Discovery starts making a lot of sense to take on the risk. If they can keep executing on the path that they're executing on by 2030, I believe they will get the debt reduction down and true fundamentals will start showing itself, giving it a fair market value, probably anywhere between 18 to 20 bucks a share. As you can see here, I have 2176 as kind of a future value for Warner Brothers Discovery. So this is one to keep an eye on. Definitely, once again, a high risk, high reward type of stock. But I do think there's definitely things taking place within the fundamentals that are starting to make it a very intriguing play. Along with that, very hard to put a price tag on intellectual property like the content creation and library that Warner Brothers Discovery has. Next up has been another lagger in Under Armour. As you guys can see here, this was a stock that was trading for over $20 a share, now trading for $6.50 a share. Current PE sitting right around seven times, Ford PE sitting right around 12 times. Now I think this Ford PE could be way off because to me with all the management misses and things that have been taking place, this is a complete turnaround story and I do think that there could be a pretty big upset when it comes to earnings. But with that being said, Kevin Plank is returning to CEO. Now this was the guy that launched the company and actually got it to a $20 valuation. The funny thing is with all three of these companies, it's really coming down to betting on management because the fundamentals are really not there. So it comes down to executing appropriately to regain fundamental strength in stock appreciation. And so we're seeing that the three commonalities with these $8 stocks and below is going to be management. Now here's what I wanna point out. To me, Under Armour's value, the value proposition is pretty unique when we compare it to other apparel companies because it deals more with that sports and athleisure area where when your kids are going to practice or there's football games, people have to buy this equipment even if we're in a recession. You're not gonna say no to your kids to get new cleats and sports products for them to be active. And so there is some defensiveness, in my opinion, built into this company. But what I wanna point out is, even though the stock went from $20 down to $6, I wanna point out that revenue growth has actually been steadily growing here, going from 4.8 billion to 5.9 billion over the last six years. And unlike a lot of other apparel companies, that gross profit is actually following through as well with operating income kind of coming all over the place. And so once again, while that revenue is coming in, 
The thing I want to point out is enterprise value went from 4.6 billion down to 3.3 billion with multiples basically staying in line. So, so the valuation has come down substantially and there's still some fundamentals here with the company. And I still think there's growth opportunities with this company when we talk about direct to consumer. And when we bring it down to free cash flow, doing $235 million of free cash flow in the trailing 12 months, once again, when we look at a lot of your clothing companies, they're carrying a lot of toxic debt. They're not free cash flowing. They're really in a tough spot. And when I look at Under Armour, very low cap company can transition to a different ways to to accommodate the consumer. They're not too big to shift. And I like that about them. The other thing is they have a presence, in my opinion, that's fairly defensive on the athletic side. So as always, ladies and gentlemen, those are my three stocks for under eight bucks. That's Warner Brothers Discovery, SoFi, and Under Armour. As always, appreciate your time. We will see you in the next one.